ontology. And that's, I think we can, I think many of us would agree that that is an important thing to at least undermine people's perceptions of Scientology and, and allow them to say what they want about it. Um, on the other hand, it can be used to ruin people's lives and, and censor information about feminist science fiction. Um, trolling is kind of like, you know, lighting police cars on fire during a riot. You know, sometimes bad, sometimes good. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, great, yeah. One more? Okay. Let me just fit in an, an, an announcement. We have, after this talk, which is uh, one other talk that's not in the printed schedule, so please don't leave yet. We have a follow-up to the WikiLeaks talk earlier today. If you're interested, just stay here and we'll do that after the questions were answered. Thanks. So one, one more question? Or? Okay. Uh, hi, this is Kara okay. from the Meta Lab. Um, well, one thing, one aspect that you didn't really mention is that this is corporations we are dealing with. And their goal is not to increase free speech. Their goal is to increase shareholder value. So I wonder, how do you think anybody's ever going to fix this? Because Google or Reddit or whoever doesn't have an interest in promoting free speech. They have an interest in getting people to go to their sites. And I think that this is the big question that suddenly this, these issues of free speech and how do we give people these basic rights are in the hands of corporations. Do you have any thoughts on this issue? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. Um, you know, whether we can actually expect any kind of free speech when the speech is being broadcast through corporations. Um, you know, this is one way in which the new media is very much like the old media. Um, you know, you never got, it's not like there was ever a magical time when you got news that was free from corporations. Um, I mean, I've worked at a lot of independent media organizations um, for most of my life. And even then, even when I was working at an independently owned free weekly newspaper uh, in San Francisco, it was still a company and there was a, par there was a party line. Even though we were a leftist paper, the guy who ran the paper was anti-union. I don't know why, he was an idiot. Um, but we wanted to cover union politics and we couldn't. Um, and I mean, that's just a, a tiny example um, of you know, what could happen at a much larger company where you know, they have a lot more uh, values that you might not agree with. So I think that, that the question isn't so much, you know, will the corporations ever care about giving us free speech? Because they never have. Um, political entities have rarely cared about giving us free speech. Usually free speech exists in the kind of collisions between those things, in the collision between the state and the corporation, or the collision between the law and the state and the corporation, or the collision between the citizenry using the law against the corporation, or the citizenry using the corporation against the state, which happens a lot in the United States. Um, so I think that it, it's a matter of realizing that the corporation doesn't give a shit about free speech. And so that, that's why I say the whole thing about um, when you when your content gets removed from Blogger or Flickr, like hoping that you can just petition them to get your stuff put back up is foolish. I mean, maybe it'll happen, but they have no incentive, especially if it's a free service. Why do they care if your stuff is up there, you know? Um, that for them, it's just, you know, your content is what brings more eyeballs to the site. Um, so I think you have, you have to go forward realizing the corporation is not on your side. You're going to have to be fighting against them. You know, either you can form your own independent organization that tries to disseminate news, or um, you can go about engaging in free speech the way we have throughout the past hundred years, which is trying to sneak it in, <laughs> trying to make, you know, trying to, you know, even though the company doesn't want to have that message, that you try to sneak it in somewhere. You know, try to write an article for Wired about why hacking is good. It's hard. <laughs> I've done it, but you know, it can be hard to do. But it can be done, and it has been done. So I think there is hope, but you just have to be very skeptical. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, I have a question for you. Um, you're talking about freedom of speech, but um, isn't it more a freedom of choice? If you want to read something on Dig, because you dig it, you think it's a great site, you go on there, you know how uh, the news is generated, you know how people vote, and something you want to see, you want to, you know, I, I think the system is great. If a lot of people choose an article that's great, and you always have the choice of reading an article. If you read the headline, you think, well, this is something I might want to read, or this is something you don't want to read. He Dick is the same as uh, the news you see on Fox News, for example, but only then the selection is made by the editors of Fox News. It's very right, it's very biased, well, they call it fair and balanced, but it's something uh, people want to see something people believe in. So you always have the freedom of choice. So I don't get it, what you're saying about freedom of speech. If you want to start your own website, you can. You can write anything you want. So if okay. you choose to go to Dick, then it's something you like to read, right? Okay, so, so there's sort of two answers to that, to that question, or to that statement. Um, one is uh, that you know, you're, you're saying that, okay, you choose to go to dig. Um, it's your choice whether or not to read those stories um, that people like or that you like. Um, and I think that actually um, it's not, that, that there's less choice involved than you think. And that's why I brought up that issue of the bounds of the expressible. Because, in fact, the range of options, and, now, and remember the range of findable options on the, on the web, um, are actually much smaller than has been advertised. Um, and the problem with something like Dig is that um, not only is it that there aren't that many news sources that are run by nerds that contain news that nerds might want, um, like Dig, but the people who are, who are promoting news on Dig aren't necessarily doing it for the reason that they're supposed to, right? They're not doing it because they love that news or because they actually think it's worthy news. They're doing it because they're trying to game the system and get their story on the front page, which is why, for like the past two years, every few months, the same story goes to the very top of Dig, which is hot chick in a Linux t-shirt, okay? How many people have seen that story multiple times on Dig? It's the same picture. But every few months, like, it comes back up to the top. And I'm not averse to hot chicks and Linux t-shirts. I'm just saying that that's not a perennial piece of news. People are putting that on there. I mean, maybe it is, but it's, you know, <laughs> um, it's, not a, it's not something that people are putting up there because they're like, you really need to know this. Okay, they're putting it up there because they're like, dude, okay, we all can dig a chick in a Linux shirt, right? So it's, it's not honest, is what I'm trying to say. It's not an honest form of news sharing. It's a form of gaming the news, and so people end up losing. And the unpopular voices, um, the voices that really need to be heard, don't necessarily get heard because people are too busy trying to game the front page to get their shit on there. So, I mean, that's really the missing link there, is sort of honesty in news promotion. Like, maybe you're the most honest digger in the world and you only ever dig stories that you think are fine and wonderful and that contain good scientific information. Yay, okay, you are the ideal user, but you are not the only kind of user and you may not be the kind of user who's shaping that front page that millions of people go to and think of as a good news source. So there's two things. We want people to be more skeptical of dig as a news source, but we also want to acknowledge that